Okay, welcome. This is my video tutorial on how I prefer to do retouching. Uh, this is Dustin Meyer with Dustin Meyer Photography. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are in Adobe Lightroom 4 and I'm going to show you some of the preset adjustment brushes uh, that I created as we go along here. Uh, first things first though, uh, this is the picture that uh, we're going to work on. So um, the first thing we're going to do is zoom in here and we're going to go into uh, a little bit closer to get rid of these catch lights. Now catch lights are just little reflections of the flash that show up in the eyes um, and you can change the size of the brush by moving the mouse wheel up and down. Uh, over here it's default on heel but we're going to go with clone and just click that and move it to a dark region and you can move your mouse out of the way to let it show you how it looks and that looks good. So let's do that to the other one. There we go. We're going to close that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to soften the skin around the face and we're going to open an adjustment brush and we're going to click on a preset that I've created called Soften Skin and what that is, if you click the down arrow, it'll show you. Softened skin is clarity all the way down to negative 100, sharpness all the way up to 100, and noise all the way up to 100. Make sure that you have the auto mask unchecked, and I've got feather at about 50%, flow at 100%, and density at 100%. So we're just gonna go around the forehead, just kind of over the bridge of the nose and then down the nose. Now the thing to keep in mind is to avoid any definitive creases in the face like the laugh lines from the sides of the nose down to the edges of the mouth so that way we don't soften those too much. So again we just want to make sure that we don't soften the face, facial lines too much otherwise the face begins to lose its shape. We're just kind of going over areas where there's grain. And you can go over the bags in the eyes, but this filter doesn't quite work that well for that. So, and then we're gonna close that to save it. We're gonna zoom back out. So far, so good, okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna brighten the white around the eyes and the brush that I had created called Whiten Eyes. Click that, and the values on that are 0.41 on exposure, minus 47 on saturation, and on this one we do want to have the auto mask on. So let's go in, and usually the larger part of the white of the eyes is sufficient if you do both sides too much, then sometimes the eyes can look like they're not focused on the camera because it might change the way it looks to the viewer. And then you can go up or down. Now, when the subject's further away, you might go higher. If they're closer in, you might go less. Usually somewhere in the middle, around 50% or so is good. So that looks good. And next we're gonna do whiten teeth. So we're gonna do another brush opening and under whiten eyes, we're gonna click on whiten teeth. And to show you the values on that, it's 0.21 up on exposure, minus six on contrast, plus 13 on clarity, and negative 55 on saturation. Again, we have the auto mask feature on, and we're just gonna click inside the teeth and just brush over them. The auto mask really helps with that. And to zoom out, and then move the mouse out of the way to see the points. That looks pretty good. And then adjust the slider to make sure the teeth aren't too bright. There we go, that looks, looks pretty good. So we're gonna close the brush again to save that one. So for the most part, the face is pretty darn close to what we wanna do uh, for stray hairs across the face and on the outside of the hairline, uh, we go into Photoshop and that's pretty much the only thing we do in Photoshop along with liquify, which we'll use in case 
uh, we need to do a little body contouring but for the most part that's uh, what we're going to do in Lightroom so um, I'm going to go down and open this file in right click edit in and Photoshop okay and now we have the file open in Photoshop and what I prefer to do is to go over uh, first we'll start with any hairs that are crossing the face so let's zoom in go up here and we're going to take the patch tool and just look for any hairs that might be going across the skin so we're going to select that pull and maybe one more time and again we're just right now with the patch tool working on the hairs that have cut and across the front of the face all right and now we're going to work on the hairs outside the face or outside the hairline so I use the magnetic lasso for this the values are feather is one pixel anti-alias is checked width is 5 pixels and contrast is 10% with a frequency of 100 and what I typically do is start from the outermost part of the shoulders and work my way up along the edge of the body and then I typically find a pretty solid strand or grouping of hairs and work my way up slowly because I'll get more anchor points that way with the magnetic lasso and it might take a little bit more time to do it this way, but I find that the end results appear much more natural. Really, all I'm trying to exclude are any individual stray hairs that have fallen away from the main grouping of hair. There we go. And then we're just going to cut directly across here. And then down, we're going to go around the shoulder. And, whoops try and get the white part of the shoulder here to exclude this group of stray hairs on the outside. And we're going to zoom out, cut across, make our selection. And now what I do is I click, I right click the selection, go to refine edge. My radius is a little bit over 50. My contrast is 100. My smooth value is 4 feather again of six points and zero on contract expand click OK zoom out just a little bit now I'm going to copy this selection and I'm going to paste it right on top to make a second layer and now I'm going to click on background because that's the layer we want to work on I'm going to go over to my clone tool and I usually have it at a low hardness of about 22% my opacity is around 50 and my flow is a little over 50 and what we're going to do now is <coughs> we're going to find an area slightly near but not too close to the hair that we're trying to erase select it with the alt key click it and just slowly start painting our way up the side I typically just do the sides first Again, you can do this multiple times just to erase any stray hairs. The goal is not to really get rid of the hairs entirely. It's more just to make them fade away. And then let's finish up with the top part of the hair. Because usually any stray hairs on the top are the most distracting. And then um, I go ahead and just zoom out just to kind of double check. And if there's any major changes like right over here, what I can do is go over to the art history brush and just slowly kind of paint it back a little bit. And I usually have that about 50% opacity, 50% flow. And again, it's just to try and minimize any major changes or any super definitive edges where it's noticeable that it had been photoshopped. And again, we're not really trying to 
completely remove any stray hairs. We're just trying to make it less distracting. And then I just close this and click save and it automatically gets re-imported back into Lightroom. And boom, there's our end result. So we started with, let's see, started with this. Actually, we started with much different than that. We started with that. And then we ended with this. So again, it's just nice and natural and nothing too drastic, but enough to enhance the look without making it look uh, too much uh, photoshopped. So thank you very much.